Hi, in this tutorial I'm gonna show you how to create an intro like this one. So to get started I'm gonna create a new composition which is gonna be using the HDTV 1080 preset. It's gonna be 7 seconds long with a frame rate of 29.97. So once I've created my composition the first part of the tutorial is gonna be really interesting because we're gonna be creating the shutter blades. So we're gonna create a new shape layer and I'm gonna rename it to base. And right now we're simply going to add an ellipse. We're gonna change the size of the ellipse to 500 and we're also going to add a fill. It's gonna be a red fill for now so that we can see what we're doing. Then I'm gonna create another shape layer and I'm gonna rename this one to shutter. And the next step is going to be selecting the pen tool. Then I'm going to click right here in the center. And afterwards, I'm going to shift click all the way up here. So by pressing shift, this line is going to be straight. It's going to be using a white stroke and 10 pixels for the width. So right now, I'm going to open contents. And you can see that we have this shape one group. We're going to delete the fill and I'm going to press enter after I've selected this group to rename it to blades. So this line is gonna represent the blades of the shutter, of course, after we make several more. So the first step right now is gonna be selecting the pan behind tool, and I'm gonna move this anchor point all the way up here. So we're gonna be animating the rotation, and this way this line is gonna rotate around the anchor point. So let me press Ctrl Z to undo that and I'm going to create a rotation keyframe and I'll just leave it there because we're going to be animating it anyways. The next step is going to be adding the twist effect and we're going to place it inside of this group. We're going to increase the angle to maybe 40 and then we're going to move the center all the way down here so that we have a line that looks like this. Now the next step after doing this is going to be adding a new group and I'm, we're going to place it outside of the existing one. I'm going to rename this to center and to this group we're going to add again a single ellipse and we're also going to add a fill. Now this fill is going to be white. So the next step is going to be increasing the size of this ellipse to let's say 300 for now. So right now we're going to add a repeater. We're gonna place it underneath of the blades but before the center group so that only this line is gonna get repeated. We're gonna set the number of copies to eight and we're gonna set the position back to zero. We're gonna change rotation to 45 degrees and as you can see right now we have our eight shutter blades. So right now I'm also going to create a keyframe for the size of this center ellipse and also I'm going to create a keyframe for the rotation of the entire layer because those are the properties that we're going to be animating. Right now with this layer selected I'm going to press U and that's going to show me these three keyframes of the properties that we're going to be animating. Right now, the next step is going to be selecting the base layer and then pressing Ctrl D to duplicate it. Then I'm going to place it on top and I'm going to rename it to matte. So pretty much right now we're going to solve the problem of these blades sticking out. We're going to set the track matte of the shutter to alpha matte and right now everything inside of the shutter layer is only going to be visible inside of this red ellipse. The next step is going to be selecting the base and we're going to choose alpha inverted matte and right now the base ellipse is going to be visible um, in the areas which are not covered by the shutter layer. So right now we can change the color of the base to be white. The next step right now is selecting this background image which I've already imported and I'm going to drop it down into the composition. So first of all, I'm going to scale it down because it's way bigger than the actual composition. I'm going to set the scale to 45% and that's a bit more than the composition because it's going to be scaling down as we animate this. 
So right now, let's see how to animate this shutter. So as you can see, let me just change the size. If I change the rotation angle, these blades are opening and also closing. So for starters, we're going to set it to maybe negative 55 degrees and the size of the center to 500. And as you can see, we have this small white line, which is still visible. That's why we're going to increase this to 500 and maybe 505. And as you can see right now, it disappears. And then by the 15th frame, we want the size to go to 300 like that and these blades have to follow so they're gonna be at around 30 degrees maybe something like that and also the rotation we want it to go negative 20 degrees and this way the blades are gonna move even more it's just a slight movement but it makes it look a bit more realistic so right now with this background picture we're going to create a new white solid which is going to be used for the fade in we're going to place it on top of the picture we're going to press t to show its opacity create a keyframe and right here at the 15th frame we're going to set its value to zero so right now you can see that we have a nice fade into our animation so now we're going to continue animating the shutter we're going to move the playhead to one second and we're going to create a set of keyframes and then we're going to move the playhead to two seconds. So the duration of the animation that we're going to make right now is going to be one entire second. So right now I want to set the size down to 200. We also want the blades to follow. And you can probably link these two with an expression, but that would be too much to cover in this single tutorial, even though it's not that complicated and you can look it up yourself. I'm also going to animate the rotation to negative 40 so we have some more movement and this is what we have so far. So in real life when the aperture blades or the shutter blades close, less light comes in and that way the picture becomes a bit darker. So that's why we're going to be animating the exposure of this picture. So we're going to open the effects and presets panel and we're going to search for an effect which is called exposure and we're gonna apply it to this image. So right now we're gonna set an exposure keyframe right here at zero, and then back here where it says one second, we're gonna set it to 1.5 so that the image is slightly overexposed and then as the blades close, it becomes better exposed. Now the thing is in real life, this picture was taken with a wide aperture opening because of its shallow depth of field. So the blades were something like this approximately, but we don't have to be entirely realistic with this animation. So right now the next step is gonna be moving the playhead to two seconds and 15 frames. We're gonna create another set of keyframes right here. And then by three seconds, we want this to go back to 500, the rotation back to zero, and this needs to go to around negative 55 degrees. So what we've done right now is we've animated this. And what we also want to happen is we want the shutter to fade out. So I'm gonna select the base and I'm gonna press T to show the opacity property. I'm gonna set a keyframe and then all the way out here at three seconds, I'm gonna set it down to zero. So right now we have our blades fade out. So this is what we've animated so far. So I'd also like the image to kind of scale down right here at this point. So I'm going to create a scale keyframe right here and then also another one right here in the end. And I'm going to take the scale down to 35%, maybe even 34. And I'm going to select these two keyframes and hit F9 to easy ease them. So right now I'm going to open the graph editor and I'm going to right click to show the speed graph. So I know that the shutter closes between 2 seconds and 15 frames and 3 seconds. So this is where I would like this animation to peak. So I'm going to press shift and I'm going to drag this handle all the way to the left and the right one also all the way to the left. And as you can see, this is where our animation is peaking. So that should be fine. And let's preview it real quick. 
So as you can see, that looks pretty good. So the final step to animating this would be to press U and that's gonna close all these layers. Then I'm gonna press U again and I'm gonna select all these keyframes and I'm gonna hit F9 to easy ease them, which is just gonna make all the animations a bit smoother. And right now we only need to add the text. So I'm gonna leave an empty space for an imaginary name and then I'm gonna type in photography. And I'm simply gonna take this title and I'm gonna align it to the center of the composition. So we're not gonna do anything complicated, we're just gonna make a fade in. So I'm gonna press T to show the opacity of this layer. I'm gonna set a keyframe and the value of the keyframe to zero. And then right here at three seconds, I want it to be at 100%. I'm also going to ease this set of keyframes, even though it's not that necessary. And right now, if I preview this, you can see that we're done. So this, with some adjustments to make it a bit more original for yourself, can easily be used for a photography channel. That's it for this tutorial. For more tutorials, please check out my channel. Thank you for watching and see you next time.